Hi everyone, this is Laura from Green and & Company and today I'm going through the part one of two on your July's uh, Creative Maker subscription box. So I'm going to get started on the stand first. Now with being in the Creative Maker group, you guys are getting always uh, the first of what we start sometimes on new projects. So this stand will be available as a kit for um, our round signs as we continue on um, throughout the year. Um, so yeah, you guys will get that to go along with your sweet summertime uh, sign. Um, so you'll need your three pieces. You will need um, the piece where it has uh, four separate kind of, or three oval length pieces, a topper and a circle that we are going to need as well. Uh, you'll need your stain, foam brush, some sandpaper, uh, your white paint, uh, you'll need some tape, and we'll just get started on this. So, uh, with these pieces, because we do need to stain them, um, and we're going to paint them after two, you'll find it easier to just do it in the template. So I'm going to keep them in there, but I'm going to tape the back so that way they can stay um, in there when we do that. There is one more piece um, in your box, which now that I think about it, I may have left mine at the store. So, give me a sec. Nope, found it. Okay, so you'll also have this quarter inch uh, circle, which is the same thickness as the rest of your piece. So this will be going in here as the spacer so we can hang hang your signs. So you can tape the back, then remove your tape. Now these are all pieces with adhesive, but when we get to doing this circle, we're going to have to use some glue just so that it stays on better. Okay, so stick that off to the side, get your gloves, your stain, and all that stuff, and let's get staining. Okay, so if you've never done any projects with us before in the staining, um, we like to use water-based stain, uh, we use a foam brush, and I like to just give it a nice dip. And then instead of just brushing back and forth, I like to turn the foam brush on its side so I can wipe it on a lot uh, faster and more even and your stain will go further and you'll want to wipe in here. Now depending on how your guys' pieces were cut, uh, your grain might be going from side to side. So uh, for this particular one, unless you want to keep it in just the stain finish, which you're more than welcome to do, we do a white dry brush after. Um, then if you want to keep it in the stain finish, then make sure you're just staining in the direction of the grain and wiping in that direction so it looks the most natural. If you're going to paint it over top of the stain like we are, then don't worry about it. Stain this way and then we'll just paint over it after anyway. So uh, we are going to do both sides. Um, don't worry about the back. Um, those are just from the laser and for the most part we'll get covered up. By the stain uh, we won't be painting the back but if you choose to you can all right so give that a wipe just watch your edges just in case you got some on your sides all right and now you can leave that to dry. If you don't like those bird marks on the back, uh, then you can always take a sander and sand those off. If you're going to paint the back, then it really shouldn't matter because you'll be hiding most of those. But that part is done. Um, okay, now we're going to do the second parts here. So I like to do both sides, even though this part will, the bottom of the Bigger one will be to the to the uh, tabletop it sits on, but um, I'm going to do that one in 
give that one a wipe. Okay, set that one off to the side. Now this one, you don't have to stain um, in the inside because that will be hidden when we layer it. Um, and uh, so just pick the best side because some sides you can tell which part goes to the base of the laser. So just do one. Give that a wipe and leave those to dry. So these ones, I'm not gonna really add any more because I feel like there's enough in my brush. I'm just gonna gently wipe over that. You don't wanna put too, too much so it's flooding down the sides of um, the template. If you feel like you got a little bit too much, you can take them out, let them dry, and then just pop them back in after when we go to do um, the painting. If you're just like staining, then once they're dry, you can just take them out. So, all right, so those ones are done for now, and I'm just gonna leave this dry, and then I'm gonna come back and we'll continue on with uh, finishing the rest of this. Okay, see you soon. Okay, so I'm back now. All of your stuff should be dry, and then we're gonna go in and we're gonna sand it with our 400 grit sandpaper to smooth it out. If you're just staining and you're sanding it, then make sure you're sanding it with the grain so that way you don't have scratch marks or sandy marks that are opposite uh, the grain. Otherwise, that'll be very obvious. taken these out just so they make sure they were nice and dry on on the edges I'm just gonna plug them back in and then just very lightly go over that and then wipe out any dust in there just so that way the paint doesn't have a chance to grab a hold of that okay so now bring all your pieces back. Now you're gonna need your two inch, your two inch brush for this. Uh, some paper towels so we can blot off um, all that excess paint. And my container's at the store. I'm just gonna squeeze a little paint onto here. There we go. Okay, so um, so the finish is really up to you as to what you want to do here. I'm going to dry brush so it's not a solid white, has a little bit of uh, variation to some of the signs that I might do. Um, so that's why I'm doing it this way. You can paint it any color you want. We're including white. Uh, you can dry brush it, you can paint it in solid. Totally up to you. All right, so put a little paint on your brush, wipe most of it off, and then with some movement in your hand before you even hit the board, get that brush going up and down there. Now, I'm not worried about the sides this time because I'm actually coming in here and um, feathering out that paint on the sides because I want it to blend and look nice and like one finish so don't need very much like there's hardly anything on there I'm just rubbing most of that off and then coming in here and 
applying it. So as my brush, I feel as it's running out, I push a little harder. I even like to turn my brush on its on this way rather than this way because then I can really define those those lines. You just want to make sure you don't have too much paint because that's why it's called dry brushing. That way you're working with a dry brush. Just make sure to keep coming in as you're doing this. So if you get any paint on the side, it's not going to um, have big drips and you're even to need out when it's wet so you don't get this strong definition at the sides. Just make sure if you just come back in and blend anything when you're coming the other way. All right, now I'm not going to worry about the bottom because we're going to put it in that slot anyway. Make sure you don't forget the top. And then just build it up to however many layers you want to do. You guys can see me in there, okay? Yeah. Um, so just keep, you know, gently adding what you like. Sometimes I feel like I can just get carried away. Keep adding and adding and adding. Now, if you want to use, for those of you, you know, who've never done this before and you want to make sure your good side is the front, practice on the back. Oh, I'm going to do the back now anyways, just to, just because. But yeah, use your back as your practice. That way you can, no one's going to see it really anyways, so that way you can be comfortable with what we just did. Now with it being a dry brush, you're pretty much able to handle it as you're painting it because it's really not got big wet pieces on there. So, okay, I think I'm happy with it, but I tend to play with it till I really just need to put the brush away. So, um...
remember though, each time you do your front side, always come in and feather out those sides so that way they're not obvious heavy marks from coming in and doing the main side. Okay, I'm leaving it. Just put it off to the side. Now leave it close by because you wanna just make sure you get the rest of your finishes pretty consistent. Um, especially these ones. Now, these ones we're gonna go, you're not gonna go up and down like the grain on that. You're gonna go side to side. Now definitely make sure you don't have a whole bunch of extra paint because you don't want it to seep through um, and get stuck. But um, once you're done these, you can always pull them out of their templates so that they can dry, but you want to try and keep the depth of finish fairly consistent to what you did on the base, or I mean on the post there. So once you're done with them, you can always lay them over top and see if they look pretty good with their finish. You just don't want to paint them solid if you're doing something like this. You definitely want to make sure that they're consistent. Now, once these are glued on or stuck on, then you can come back in there and do those edges. It's just kind of hard to do it in their template. Um, but laying out there like that. And once you come in here to have to do this a little bit more, you can always blend these a little bit more as well just to get that finish consistent. So I think these ones are fine. I'm just gonna pull them out just to make sure that they're not gonna stick in there. Give this one just a little bit more, there we go. Okay, so those are there. Now for this one, I mean, you can do the underside. I'm not because you're never gonna see it, um, but I will do the two top sides. Now just watch because you do have this groove here and that is meant for your post to stay into. So you don't really want to fill it with paint. So definitely make sure you are um, not getting any in there. If you are getting some drips and stuff, then you definitely need to get in there um, right away and wipe that out. It's just this color, but nothing in drip way. So, all right. So remember to do your edges. a little paint goes a long way. I didn't really squeeze a huge amount on that tray and it is able to do all of these. Just watch when you do these because your brush wants to catch and get a little heavier there so you'll notice that you might get a stronger stroke there. I mean you can blend it out with your sandpaper. You can try and smooth that out but For the bottom one, it's not going to matter as much because you're going to cover it up anyways because you go like that. Um, so, okay, I think I am good with this.
gonna go put this into water and I will be actually no I'm not I'm gonna put it in a bag because I need it for those other pieces so give me a sec okay so don't wash your brush put it in a bag till you're done okay so it's fairly warm in here today and uh, this is pretty much dry so I'm gonna go in here and sand it already I like to distress my edges a little bit too so really hard to kind of stand aside but just do your best just to let it hit those high spots okay good enough these back in here just to give them quick sand. Okay. Okay, so these are almost dry like I pretty much could sand them if I wanted to but I'm not worried about those right now because we don't need them till later however there is a chance that sometimes this is just a little snugger and fit and depending on how much paint you may have got on the edges that can affect it going into your slot so I want you to pre-test them all before you even get going here and adding glue so this one is it fit fine before but just a little bit of paint can just change that. So just come in here with one of your sandpapers and just wear that down a little bit and make sure it fits pretty good. Okay, so it can go in there. Okay, now check the other one. Two, also because if you get any paint in there that also can affect it. So it's a little snugger on this one than it is on this one. So I'm going to go in with my grittier one. So this was the 400 one. I'm going to come in here with the gritty one and I'm going to pretty much sand away all of the paint and stain that might be on that little lip. And I'm going to run it across the bottom here because you're not going to see that anyway. Let's try this again. So this one is fine. That one wasn't the problem. This one was my problem. Oops. Okay. So I see just a tiny little bit. So I'm just going to take my sandpaper and go in there. And it doesn't hurt just to take your sandpaper in there just in case. Okay. Okay, yeah, if I push on it hard enough, ugh, then it'll be fine. So try to do this. Do one, do two, and these should fit just fine. And then we're going to add some glue to that after. Okay, so those ones are good. I'm just going to leave it. Now, these go here, there, there, and there. Okay, so these ones are cut with adhesive, so you can just peel that back. Now if it starts to lift, just, just rub your finger on, the, on this and push that down. Okay, now so come in here Make that nice and even. Okay, that one's good. Same thing here. There we go. 
should fit perfectly across. Don't push on it yet, just line it up, make sure it's all nice and even, and then you can give it a push. Okay, now don't stick this one on yet because it goes on top of this one. However, if I get this one on, then it's gonna be really hard to come in here and paint these. So really, grab your brush. Now you don't need a whole lot of paint, so I would say try not to load up your brush again. Just come in here and lightly feather that in. Because you're gonna be going in the opposite direction as what you've normally done, so you want to be careful and blend that out. Actually, you know what? I'm going to grab me a little brush, hold on. Okay, so you can either take your half inch or your quarter inch. I'm gonna start with my half inch. And just go in here. And if it's easier for you, you can just do these while they're not attached. I'm fine with that. It's whatever you would like to do. Just, I think you'll find it better to use the little brush because then you won't get those extra lines up there going the other way. So I'm just gonna speed through this part really quickly. So and actually, I'm not even so much dry brushing as I'm just putting a little bit of paint on there and kind of just brushing out that way I'm keeping the brush in there and going up and not hitting the part that we've already done Okay, so I'm not sure if you can see, but now I've got those covered. And uh, for the most part, I've been able to keep those even. Now, if you feel like you've got, you know, just a little bit like here, I'm just gonna come in here and just sand that to blend that. And remember, your sign's gonna hang here, so some of this isn't even gonna be seen. This one is a Good enough, I am fine with that. Okay, so now that this part is done, oops, missed the spot. Now, I mean, depending how fussy you're being and stuff, you may want to come and do two or three light coats to build up that edge, just because you may have done that as you were doing the rest of it, but to me, it's it will be fine. Okay. So with these, if we just did them with adhesive, if you have this in a warm spot or anything like that, over time, this, the weight of the sign can knock that right off. I tested it, so that's why I know. So we are going to use um, 
you can either use wood glue, you can either use, um, you can either use the, the Gorilla Glue and the gel. I like that stuff because it's a little thicker and has the chance to grab on just a little bit better. So you use what you've got. But if you use wood glue, just be careful because once it, you put it down and it squishes out, you don't want any of that color to be on there. Although, you know, this is a little bigger circle. So technically you could hide some of that, but Okay, so I'm just gonna put, oops, there we go, already out. Okay, so put that on that score circle. So make sure you're putting it on the right side because the circle dot there will help you. I'm just gonna give it a little press and I'm gonna let that sit for, it usually says not very long, 10 seconds, but I know sometimes that takes a little longer just because it can't push on it quite so much without it sliding. So as soon as you put pressure, it will slide. So just make sure you keep it lined up and uh, just watch that. So once that's done, now these are cut with adhesive on the back only because it's cut in the template. So what I would find is take that off and take your finger and gently rub off that adhesive, just like that. Pick it off, it comes off fairly easily. And then we will add some glue to here in a minute. So I will be right back. Okay, so I'm back and it's only been a few minutes I went and washed my brush. So that seems good to go. I'm not really gonna push on it that hard just in case it's still a little fragile, but uh, for the most part, it's not moving. So that's good to go. So, so oops, hold on. Oh, sure, because I'd be Clean my brush already. All right, so forgot about this piece. I'm just gonna take my little tiny one here and just get some paint on here. And I'm just gonna go around and do this because it will be easier before getting it on there. So. All right, and then just make sure to smooth out the fronts there. Okay. I'm gonna go put this brush in water and I'll be right back. Okay, so take this one. You should have rubbed off all the adhesive already. And take your glue and put a few drops on there. And then you're gonna have to do your best to center it. So you really should just use your fingers underneath and just kind of feel that it's centered. So give it a good push and then just Kind of make sure that it's even. Maybe we shouldn't, so that's fine there. I mean, you could come in if you wanted to and paint that side of those things, but remember your string is gonna hang there, so you're really not going to see it all that much. So I'm just gonna give that just a moment to set, and I'm going to get these ones sanded. So for the base, um, I like to use wood glue. So um, not that I can't use my crazy glue, but I need a lot more and it's just a little bit more expensive. So I tend to use the wood glue. Uh, okay. Okay, found it. Okay, so that should be pretty much dry. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I like to stick the top piece on first because I wanna line it all up at once. And some length here. So I'm just gonna come in here, put some glue, not too close to the edge and I mean, if you get it in here and you squish too much close to here, it's not coming out, which is fine because I usually just leave mine stuck to its piece and I don't ever pull it back off. So now that you've got some in there, take this and line it up and then give it a really good press. 
Now, if you see some glue coming out, you will want to wipe that up right away. But you should be good there. And just give it some pressing. Now, if I pull on this, it will come out. But I think because I like the stability of it being glued to there instead of being able to wobble sometimes just because it that a little bit of sanding we did could have just made it not quite so snug um so i'm just gonna if yours doesn't come out then just leave it if yours does come out just a little bit just plop a little glue I probably you should use a clear one on there but it's too late now all right, so I'm just gonna squish that in there. Take, take your baby wipes, because that works really well. And just come in here and wipe that extra glue. If you use wood glue, you just don't want it to dry and then you see that yellow blob sitting there. I know it will bug me. Okay, so just leave it, let it dry, and then it will be ready to hang your sign. All right, so this part is done, and I will be back here shortly, and we'll work on part two. All right, see you guys.